I mean, like... Let's be real. What, <laughs> uh, what is what that? What the hell did you do to yourself? Uh... Well... Okay. I mean, why am I looking in here? Why am I even? It's because I'm a hoarder, that's why. I can't resist. You're getting rid of that first thing in the morning. And risk partial to complete paralysis? Great idea, Dad. <laughs> Damn it. And he did that? Why? Just to spite me? Oh! I told you to stay out of the stacks. I'm better off there than I am- Oh shit! Fuck! Stop yelling. You're only making it worse. I'm making it worse? Look at him! It's grotesque! It's disgusting! This freak of nature is not my son! Victor, please. Your father didn't mean it. We're just worried about you, that's all. Holy hell. Okay. <sighs> okay. So... Oh, it's dead quiet. So we're, again, we're mixing the thoughts together. Adam was like, maybe self-experimenting with um, implants or what have you. And then we freaked out. And that's kind of where we're seeing the similarities here with this family dynamic and the wolf guy thing. Beast, animal. I don't know how I should feel about the fact that it's completely silent. We're on a stage. Once upon a time, there lived in a certain forest a brave little wolf, the fiercest creature who was ever seen. <laughs> Once again. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. It's okay, Victor. Please calm down. It's like visceral. Perfect. Mm hmm Talk to him, Victor. I know there is still hope. Talk to who? Not like this. <laughs> Jesus, this is hopeless. Look, he's at it again. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> We're in for another show. Look at more and more people. Look at him. Just give up already. Oh, it's just fucking sad. No. Whoa. <sighs> what the fuck? What did I do to deserve this? Please, you need this. You're not. 
So Once upon a time, there lived in a certain village a little country girl. The proudest creature. Needless to say, we have some family issues here. Congratulations. We're past the first phase of the treatment, and it looks promising. Your body is responding well to the genetic material. Thank you, Doctor. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Whose oh, voice is that? All right. You'll thank me in a couple of weeks when the shift starts to occur. Oh. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the results. It's this guy. So he got actual implants to basically transform into a wolf? Holy. This is us, like, skulking around in our lair. Finally! Some... off. Oh, so you see, while it is technically inoperable, this procedure can practically nullify the symptoms. I'm not going to lie. The treatment is invasive, but it is by far the best oh. option. Oh, thank you, Doctor. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Did you hear that, Dan? Whoa. Oh no. Oh no! Okay. 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 Okay, we're still the wolf. <laughs> Thanks. Let's just, let's just stay in the path. Unless, what is this? Nothing. Whoa, did you see that? There, there was definitely a thing there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Spooksville. Oh, look at the birds. You see the shadows? Oh, okay. The tattoo shop. Let's go. So he took this job. I'm right. It's something I need to do. Once in your life, can't you just admit that you're wrong? He took this job against our advice, let's call it. Meanwhile, we work for Chiron. Shit. Oh, we can't even. Oh, we can't even approach! Oh man, that's creepy! Shit. Why am I checking that? 
Oh, let me guess. Lara Lazarski, damn it. She's not here. It's just a body. She was young. A piece of flesh. Nothing more. It didn't have to be this way. We can do better. I can do better. She was 30... 32, was it? Yeah, super young. Whoa, what the f- Holy fuck. Holy fuck! <laughs> oh, we still can't. Thanks. Check you him. better stay here. There might be some very nasty people out there. Oh, shit! Yanis, fuck. Oh, look, this is the hallway. Okay. Mm hmm. You don't. He finds you. He always gets his prey. Oh, no. So this is, this is obviously super recent because that was said to us. Oh, the pig. And what the hell? Three pairs of eyes, four gallons of plasma, two hearts, two livers, a set of lungs. A pretty decent yield. Cool. Yeah. No. Great. Fantastic. Oh, look. He's always out there, watching, waiting. <laughs> uh huh. Whoa! Fucking shit! Oh man! Fuck! <laughs> oh. All right. Holy shit, man. <sighs> oh. Okay. Are we supposed to follow him? I'm fine if we don't. Oh, now we're seeing. Oh, this is the. the pigeon coops. up where we started. Whoa! It's like hunting ourselves, basically. Look at this. Please. 
die. Or get used to it. Whatever hole you crawled out of, maybe I'll find some answers. Yeah, I have a feeling that that's not going to happen. Yes. There's still a lot of debate as to what this synchrosine is actually doing. Decreased. Um, it seems like it's very much only to get rid of the glitches and when we're told that we have to do it. Our little scuffle has shorted out the generator. If I'm to get out of here, I need to restore power. So we'll need power to get this open. Or do we? Maybe not. Damn it. Okay, we could go down there. The body shorted out the generator. To get this door open, I gotta restore power. Follow the wires. It's probably in there. It's got to be these, right? Control panel, power level, backup generator. Well. It's never that simple. <laughs> of course it isn't. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Hmm. Is there anything over here we need to switch? Hold on. The fuse is busted. I need to find a spare. Are you kidding? That's great news. Okay. Okay, we can only take one. Oh, they're different amperages. Okay, that's a 10 amp. Christoph Madig. Do we know? Here we go. Okay, this is a 35 amp. Voltage 650, okay, 35 amp. So that's the one we need to find. There we go. In theory, this should work. See, these are the gauges represented there. 
These are the backup generator power things that were red before. And then we could probably use the control panel. This should work. Do I have to wait for it? I'll wait for it. Let's get out of here. Hoo -hoo. <sighs> We're doing it. Killer's Den is likely somewhere nearby. I have to find it. It may hold the answers to what I to what happened to Adam. What about all the other doors? Are these... Whoa. I'm gonna check. this door specifically. Ooh. Let's just go straight for now. Maybe we have to go down there? As much as I really don't want to? Nedabilis. We've actually found a not insignificant amount of those. Well. Oh yeah, we're on to it. We are definitely on to it. Maybe? What the hell? Oh, birds. Oh, that must be where that wraps to then. We're gonna be fine in here. Gonna be fine. Maybe this is not leading to that same bird cage. But this definitely looks lair adjacent. Found his hideout, whatever he took from Adam's apartment, he likely stashed it here. What a place. Hard to believe Ooh. anyone could live here. To be fair, this is one of the nicer places we've seen.
medicinal grade inhalers. These weird masks. Clostridium tetini bacterium detected. Beryllium copper. Artificial leather lambskin regulated materials detected. And we have the computer. Oh, frick. <laughs> he came to me again. The man from the looking glass. His voice is soothing, like leaves rustling in the wind. He's the only one who understands. The only one who cares. Who you is he? See what I was lacking, what I must do. But what he's asking, am I strong enough? Of course I am. That's the coward Victor talking again. Enough talk. Ugly human words hurt my throat. I can barely get them out uh. anymore. It's <sighs> time to act. Wow. And before we go back there, because... <laughs> I'd rather not. John Sebastian Ballard. Oh, maybe this is the guy. We talked to John Sebastian Ballard, CEO of Ballard Genetics and Augmentations on the future of personalized modification and the fear of change. Tom Tubal. Mr. Ballard, please call me John. John, let me present to you a hypothetical situation. Let's say your son turns 18. He comes to you and says, Dad, I don't feel comfortable with my body. I'm going to go to the nice folks at BGNA, Ballard Genetics and Augmentations, and have them grow tentacles on my face. Well, if he had the means to pay for the treatment, I would assume him to be a very smart young man, so I would gladly hear him out and do my best to understand his decision. You're dodging my question, though. I'm merely pointing out how unfair it is. It's always easy for rabble-rousers to say, what if it was your kids? But in truth, this conversation has been going on for hundreds of years. When the cybernetic revolution came about, there were young people... Or there were people saying that we were all doomed and that we've gone too far. A hundred years ago, a transgender person would be shunned as a misfit and a freak of nature, which thankfully seems outlandish by today's standards. There will be... There will always be people out there who fear change. But what if we reach a point where the rabble-rousers, and thanks for that, by the way, will be right? Is there a limit? Is gene splicing it? A very wise man once said, for us to be afraid of genetic research was akin to the ancient Chinese being afraid to fly kites because one day they might be crashing planes. I believe this sentence to be true even today. In terms of shaping our genome, we've barely scratched the surface. And yet it's making, it's being promoted as a hot new trend. We're seeing teenagers risk their lives by making these irreversible changes. Not a BGNA, we only treat consenting adults. Well, that's all well and good, but the technology's out there, isn't it? The cat's out of the bag. Come now, Tom. Are you really going to make me use the guns don't kill people argument? I'm only wondering if you think it's responsible to promote it as a fashion statement. Please, you said it yourself. The treatment is irreversible and does involve a degree of risk, albeit small. Do you actually think anyone would make a life-altering decision of that caliber on a whim? You keep using the word treatment. Why? Because it's precisely what it is. Not really, though. I mean, it doesn't treat any illness. Of course it does. Frankly, I'm a bit shocked to have to explain this to you. Tom, when you speak of illness, you're clearly thinking of purely physical ailments. I'm certainly not trying to offend you, but I think it's fair to call that mindset medieval. So you're saying turning someone into a genetic hybrid is a form of psychotherapy? I'm saying that anything that helps a person feel at home in their body should not be instantly discarded. So we should just jump in with both feet? There's no place for healthy skepticism? I rarely find skepticism healthy. More often than not, it's a refuge for the prejudice and the closed-minded. All I can ask for is to not vilify that which we don't understand. Do you consider yourself a prophet of change? I consider myself tired. It's been a very busy week. In that case, I'll let you have your rest. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for having me. Wow, okay. So grocery list. Hey, managed to have a new client. Guy's interested in a pre-war transmitting equipment and he's got the dough to pay for it. Doesn't need to be mint, but it has to be in working condition. Here's a list of what he's looking for. A B8X antenna. Uh, Nemo synth dual mounted receiver, the bulky industrial one, not one of the consumer models, a VGX4 encoding chip, Vitalia IFP fusion batteries, as many as you can find. I'm counting on you, buddy. Don't screw this up, Rob. 
Victor, the parts you sent me last week were fucking useless. I managed to salvage the antenna, but the receiver was busted beyond repair and the rest was rusted all to hell. Where'd you find this stuff? Did you dig it out of the fucking trash? Needless to say, the client's not paying for this crap. I had to offer him a discount on my premium stuff to just keep us in business. You're on thin fucking ice, my furry friend. You pull a stunt like that again and you'll have to look for a new dealer. Okay, so he's working with Rob to supply this stuff. Please stop. Victor, this freakish charade needs to stop now. Mom and Dad, okay, a sister, brother maybe, are terrified and I don't blame them. The whole gene splicing obsession is one thing, but the packages you've been sending them? Whatever you think they did to you, this is fucking cruel and unusual. Vic, you're my brother and I'll, I'll love you even if you decide to grow an extra leg and a set of horns, but please leave Mom and Pop out of it. If you want them to accept you for who you are, just talk to them, help them understand. I know you're not delusional, so please get back to your family. It's not, we're not your enemies. Hoping to hear from you soon, Anka. Hey buddy, I got your message. Frankly, it couldn't have come at a worse time. These past few months have been pretty hard. Eliza is out of a job, again, and with a baby on the way, so I've been pulling double shifts to save up some dough. We want to have the little one spliced as soon as it gets here, Jesus. In other words, sorry, but I don't have that kind of money. It's not that I don't trust you, I know you'd pay me back, I just can't help you this time. Hope you'll figure something out, hang in there, Matt. Ain't your parents rich or something? I hear they moved to the B district. Can't you just ask them for a loan? Obviously, we're not close with the parents. Well, I'm coming for you. Dear sir, we at Ballard Genetics and Augmentations are deeply saddened by the fact that you are unsatisfied with the results of your gene splicing therapy. BGNA employs only the best experts in their field and uses state-of-the-art equipment in order to meet all of your, our patients' needs. However, we fully acknowledge our patients' right to have immensely high expectations, even if, objectively speaking, they would be found unrealistic. While we're unable to provide you with the specific details regarding your treatment, we would like to remind you that in cases requiring the use of genetic material from extinct species, in this case Canis lupus, which is wolf, I guess, uh, our experts compose unique strains obtained from our gene library. Unfortunately, we're not able to provide you with a list of donor species or to confirm slash deny whether a given species was used in the procedure. So you don't even know what you're getting? We'd also like to remind you that the aforementioned facts were stated in no uncertain terms in the pre-procedural contract. Finally, we feel obliged to inform you that a malicious DNA tampering is a very serious accusation. One that should not be leveled lightly, unless one has strong evidence to support their claim. Any unfounded accusations against BG&A made publicly or in further correspondence will be seen as slanderous and met with decisive legal actions. And he threatens them saying, I'm coming for you. That's a good way to do it. Okay, so this is June of 79. Look, before and after. He's getting the, this, like, his hair implants. The mechanical limbs. Leg. Face. Jeez. He went all in. Fuck. I don't know, dude. Whose head is this? Holy shit. No. No. Oh is that... No. The wife? This or is that... Can't be happening. It's not fucking happening. Dad? No fucking way. It's the son. There? What? what Wait, what? Sick game is this? Dad, I'm still alive. The head. Don't connect to it. Adam? Adam, are you there? I need your help. There's a place it's called Sanctuary. Adam? Adam? Just try to. Try to call me back. God damn it. Holy shit. Okay, so wait, what? Is this okay? Okay. I don't know what to believe anymore. The voice claiming to be Adam warned me not to plug into the head, but can I afford not to? Then find Sanctuary. The person claiming to be Adam mentioned a place called Sanctuary. If there's any chance he's there, I need to find it. Okay. We're to obviously we're going in to, to see this as much as I really don't want to. 
of course we're going in.